Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote, and I am your podcast host, host here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today on the show, we have David Franklin, CEO of No RX Health. Today, we're going to dive into his business, his journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and then share a peek into what it's really like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Well, welcome, David, to the show. So excited to have you here. Feel free to give us a brief overview and background of yourself and your business. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Again, I'm David Franklin. I'm based out of Austin, Texas. I'm the founder and CEO of NORX Health and Advocacy RX. I'm more than happy to share more about this, these ventures that um, really I've been a part of for five years uh, on one of them, and the other one's relatively new. It's the foundation side of the business. This all came about in 2018 when I lost my father due to a medication side effect while in the ICU. I was currently running a different company at that time, and there was a transition shift in in the passion of what I was doing. Uh, in losing my father, I realized that I needed to refocus my attention somewhere else and address different needs uh, that can help uh, our society at large. And that's around medication, uh, medication and management. Most people may not be aware, but there's roughly 4.7 billion uh, prescriptions prescribed every year in America. And two out of every three doctor's visits results in a medication. Only about 50% of those they adhere to correctly, and about 27% are not adhered to at all because they don't get picked up due to cost. So we set out to help address this issue by helping consumers uh, have more information through awareness and education to begin with to empower themselves in conversations with their primary care or trusted providers and care team, and then uh, continue advancement uh, in those areas in those ways. So it's been very exciting. Uh, we're five years into the business, and last fall we launched uh, Advocacy RX, which is the foundation side, which will do some very important things uh, later this year as we bring it uh more to market. Wow, that sounds incredible. Like just hearing your story and how you like poured that passion into your business and especially helping in the healthcare market. So I, you know, kind of like diving in, generally speaking, what does your current ownership structure look like within the business? Is it solely you or you do you have um partnerships or investors involved as well? Uh well there it's it's a mix. So the cap table is a mix. I am the uh, majority shareholder. Uh, I've gone through some business accelerators, which are on the cap table. I also, one of the first things I've done was I donated 1% of the company to a nonprofit uh, as well. So they're on the cap table. And then I have uh, my team uh, who works very hard every single week. Um, they have equity share in the company as well. Oh, wow. That is, that's incredible too. Like um, I'd like to learn a little bit about the role you currently play in the business. Like what's your, what's your day-to-day -day like? It's it's a uh, it's changing actually. Um, so, you know, early on, um, and it still seems early at five years, but uh, we wear many hats, right? And you take in place of uh, you, you take seats of people who are not at the table, and you you do those functions until you can bring other people on. This year, we've been fortunate to bring on a few more people, so we've been able to offload. Um, it large a, a lot of my duties onto other people. But for the most part, uh, I'm still over creative design, strategy, business development, um, and, you know, just, you know, helping with the innovation and oversight in sales. Um, I think as a, as a founder, uh, early stage founder, a lot of the sales is about um, your story and why you're here. Uh, as they say, investors... Um, they invest in the jockey, not the horse, right? So it's important to you know who you are and why you're doing this because in those uh, ebbs and flows of the business, which we all have, it's that passion and that purpose that will carry us through when we're tied to something so deeply as I am. You know, what you said is so true. And it's like people really, they fall in love with people, right? You know, before like the the business business, like it's the people behind the business. So um, sharing your story and, and, and what you're working on is so important. That's really cool. You know, and that kind of brings me to my next question. 
who would be like an ideal client for you? What, how would I know if I was a good fit for your, for your services? Uh, so we have uh, what's called a double-sided marketplace. So on one side, we have consumers, direct to consumer. It's a mobile application. It's called the Al app that drives medication adherence, health education. We're gamifying it with some very nice rewards for consumers uh, who adhere to their medication. On the other side, uh, which is truly the buyer, if you will, are uh, hospitals, our healthcare systems, and pharmaceutical companies. Uh, those are our two primary uh, primary buyers right now. Mm -hmm. And kind of what sets you apart in the market? Like what makes your business unique and why do your customers and clients choose you? Uh, what makes us unique is, uh, so we have competitors on both sides of the marketplace. But what makes us unique is we're connecting the two sides together. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it creates an end-to-end -end journey uh, for the consumer, for the researcher, for the physician. Um, especially with digital health technology, we're expanding the visibility of what can be seen versus the silos that they currently operate in. Um, so I'm sure there are other large uh, data science or uh, technology companies that are expanding out as well or gathering more data. Um, but that's what definitely sets us apart is our ability to bring end to end. Um, now, why us is one, uh, you know, one area that we focus on is the underrepresented communities. Uh, so by age, by race, or by gender, that's very important. Uh, this is important is if you look at statistically nearly 80% of the clinical trial data, um, that comes into market uh, has insufficient data to prove safety and effectiveness in non-white participants. This is important because these are the drugs that are coming into market uh, where adverse effects come into play and the data just isn't there. Uh, so we need better data for researchers to, have, uh, to make better decisions in the formulation of, of the drugs that's going through trials. Mm, that is powerful and very, very important. And it kind of goes into, you know, the marketing, which is something that is like very vital to that, your business and the success of it and getting the word out. So I'm curious, like what successful practices have you had in your marketing pursuits? Like what's been working for you so far? Um, well, I think just being real and being vulnerable and humble and, uh, also being courageous to carry the story around how uh, the system is doesn't represent the the full population of our society well right mm -hmm. and being able to to stand up and to help represent other people and to help bring some equality to the table mm -hmm. definitely um what kind of like strategies are you using currently in marketing are you utilizing like social media or or like newsletters, what are some of the things that have been um, your main focus? Uh, you know, some of it is uh, just like the consumer, the client, you have to meet them where they're at. You have to go to them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not always about allowing them to come to you. Uh, not as much so like if you build it, they will come. It's like build it and take it to them, like show them and be sustainable, be present uh, and and. Uh, so we go to events uh, where the clients are. We go to community events where consumers are. Uh, so that's big. I, I think underlining everybody's on the same current stream of social marketing. Uh, but that doesn't always say, I see you, I recognize you, and you're important to me in this venture, right? Um, sometimes I say, um, for example, a pharmaceutical company does clinical trials. To me, they're like a syringe pulling from the community because they need something. Whereas we're more like an IV that's a slow drip in the community. We're sustainable. We're there. We have a presence, right? And we're helping you as an individual. Uh, so marketing events, uh, of course, you got the standard trade shows. And, and then you can't forget to pick up the phone and just call somebody, right? Mm. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a Zoom call. Just call them and connect with them and understand who they are and what their needs are. It's important to know that uh, we're not, uh, as a seller, if you will, or a provider, we're not the superhero. We're not Batman. We're Robin, right? We're there to assist them to be great in their job and to reduce their stress and their burden and help them be successful. Um, so there's just some traditional uh, methods. Uh, 
you know, the marketing events, the social media, and then partnerships are very important for us. Um, whether it's through medical device companies or through physician groups, these are very important strategic opportunities for us. Mm. I like how you describe that, you know, using that, um, the metaphor of the syringe and the IV. That's a, that's a really great metaphor. And it's very true. And um, I like to see what you're building in the community. And, you know, we've kind of spent some time with your, you know, talking about marketing. So I'd love to hear, uh, you know, a little bit about you personally, like what really made you go into business for yourself or, you know, even before this business, like what was that inspiration to you uh, rather than working for somebody else? And what was that transition like? This is my fourth venture. Um, and even in corporate, I had two IPOs. Um, so uh, prior to that, I was in the Navy, Gulf War Navy veteran. Um, so I did a, a lot there for eight years. So I transitioned out. Eventually, I navigated into the startup community, and I got a taste of what that was like. Um, and then as I went through the IPOs, um, I realized that I didn't want to be isolated in a cubicle or just like in the military. Uh, I had advanced too quickly. Therefore, I had to wait more time before I could advance again. Um, so basically, I didn't want to wait. I wanted to take the opportunity to expand my career and my identity. So I launched out into uh, having my own consulting firm. That was the first one. Um, but one thing I realized, too, is that when I would walk into the office, I was minimized to this role, this title, and this job function. And I felt like I was much more than that. And I could do uh, greater things and I just didn't have the availability with that employer to do those things. And it was that desire to be more is what brought me out. Mm, that is so powerful and very inspiring to hear, you know, how you found that way to, to get to where you want to go and grow something. Um, you know, talking about growth along your journey so far, what's been something that was like a memorable roadblock or a hurdle that you overcame? And how did you make that happen? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say they're few and far between, like <laughs> roadblocks and challenges, uh, they happen uh, uh, more so than not. Uh, you have to be able to take risk and uh, make adjustments and be agile. Um, I don't know off the cuff. I can pinpoint one. I'm trying to think quickly. Uh, well, you, you know what? It, it's it's kind of easy to throw the uh, COVID and the pandemic under the bus, right? Uh, because we all had to make adjustments then. Uh, it was unforeseen. Uh, so what we did is we were in the process of lining up some pilots with a healthcare system here in Austin. And with the pandemic, they had to turn their resources elsewhere. Um, also, uh, that year, uh, South by Southwest, we were up for a, a healthcare uh, technology award and that got canceled and we never received that. So coming into the year, we thought, wow, this is great. South by we're up for an award. We have a pilot coming and it all got washed out, right? Just depleting. The thing is, is that uh, we turned inward. We looked at who we were and we started listening to the market. So we said, if we can't get clients, we can build, we can build a better product during this time, we can listen to what the client's needs are. Where did the client focus shift? Well, it shifted to drug research versus, uh, say, primary care, for example, because primary care was shifting to telehealth. But the researchers still had uh, the vaccines um, and trials to go through, and they had immediate need. So in that time, we, one, improved our product line with features, functionalities, and we conducted a pilot with a large sponsor, uh, just more like a PSA, where in three months across 10 cities, we hit just over 15,000 family practice and internalists that could reach 1.5 million African Americans to educate them on the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, so it was that very uh, efficient, effective type of communications. Um, think of an Amber Alert, but think of an Amber Alert for a, a medical recall on a medication, mm. or, uh, a notification about uh, new drug developments. So we were able to do that very quickly. Uh, and that continued our progress. Why? Because we listened to what the market was telling us during COVID. 
Oh, that's really like innovative and smart. And to, to hear how you took that experience and turned it into an opportunity for growth within the company and serving better. Um, you know, that leads me kind of into the next question too. fasting fast forward into what's coming next. What do you see the business doing in the next three to five years? Uh, I'm very excited uh, for what can happen in the next three to five years. Um, this year, um, not only were we set new revenue goals this year, we just hit revenue last year. So five years bootstrapped, um, essentially five years bootstrapped. We hit revenue at the fall of last year, which is very exciting. And this would be the first year of full revenue. Um, but in launching our foundation, Advocacy Rx, not only driving uh, health education, but in partnership with NORX and using the mobile application, uh, for the first time uh, in the United States, we will crowdsource medication refills so the consumer has nothing to pay relative to hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes. We will leverage our, our own consumer network uh, to support one another. Uh, so if you have insurance, we will help cover the cost uh, out of pocket. Or if you don't have insurance, then we will promote companies like GoodRx or Cost Plus Drugs and help pay the cost uh, value. So that's that's not done today. And that's going to be a huge step forward for us, not just in giving back to the community and providing a value to them. Uh, and then also uh, just driving the data science behind the information we're collecting to understand where the performance gaps are in the current drugs today. Mm, that's going to be revolutionary for like just the, the healthcare industry overall. I'm really excited to see that roll out. And, you know, we, with these, what you're working on, do you have an approach to like your goal setting these milestones that you're working towards? And if you do, how do you work on those goals? Well, um, you know, it's, it's incremental. Um, it's taking small actions and executing on them and allowing those actions to build into bigger things. Uh, so staying focused on what's at hand and what's in front of you, knowing that you're going somewhere with it and making those necessary adjustments to not teeter off course too far. Um, so uh, you know, they say, what is it? You can't manage what you don't monitor, right? Mm. So just having that transparency, that communication, the check-ins, and having alignment within the team that what we're doing, uh, we're all working together for the same thing. Uh, but small iterative steps, right? Make big changes, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are those are really great tips. I like want to write those down. I'm definitely going to have to come back to this episode and write those down. Um, you know, seeing your team develop too. I'd like to hear about your leadership style within the business. How do you lead your team uh, in in as you're seeing this growth happen? Well, I think I attribute a lot to my military career. Um, and then just educationally, uh, I've studied organizational leadership. But also personally being in the startup community and having the autonomy to make decisions, to make mistakes. Uh, you know, one of the most important things is I blew up a piece of equipment relatively new to being hired and I didn't get fired. And they said, okay, that cost us, we'll say $10,000 for this educational uh, experience for you. You won't do that again. So you save us later. Right. So, you know, having an employer that was kind in, uh, having a teachable moment uh, was very important. So one is giving people the opportunity to grow, excel. Uh, what's important to me is that they show their uniqueness and take ownership and, and bring to the table and make things better um, uh, based off who they are, right? Um, so that's very important to me. Uh, another thing that we do is what's called a RACI, um, R-A-C-I, so roles accountable, consult and form. But what we, because we're small, uh, sometimes the responsible person and accountable person's the same person. Uh, so we changed the word from accountable to accountability and we said accountability partners. Uh, so you can pick anybody in the company to be your accountability partner for that task that you're working to check in on you. Um, mm -hmm. It just fosters better collaboration and community, especially when you're dispersed as an organization. 
Oh, I like that. Um, yeah, I have a kind of the same word. It's called accountability buddy. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. I enjoy that a lot. And what's your approach been to hiring and retaining your team members? Uh, well, you know, probably the retaining is a little bit easier because we're small and we're also passionate about this cause. So really selling uh, the passion and the purpose and finding people who align. Uh, to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, versus just hiring off the street, if you will, uh, really going through the selection process and understand um, the technical skills could be the same, or maybe somebody's better, but if they don't align uh, with the campaign of the company with with the mission, vision, values, then um, it, they, you know, they they won't have the the ability to stay through some of the tough times like the other people have because we're all working for the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've covered a lot of amazing ground in this this interview, and you know, I you know encourage listeners, you know, take a pause and go back and and re listen to this because there's been so many great nuggets of of knowledge in here. And as we kind of begin to wrap up, I have a few rapid fire questions for you. These are just going to be quick top of head answers for, for each of them. And we've got four questions. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> All right. Question number one is what is the key to success for you? Uh, forward progress, continued mo movement. And what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Uh, look forward, keep looking forward. And what is one book or piece of content that you've read recently that has impacted you? No, not, not necessarily business, but it's think like a monk. So uh, here it's more about, especially as an entrepreneur, finding that balance uh, in everything going on uh, through meditation, through mindfulness, through conscious breathing, to being able to regulate my feelings, uh, my reactions, and to reflect uh, so just having that mindset throughout everything that's going on has been very helpful. And final question is, if you had to choose only one area of business that you could immediately improve on tomorrow, what would it be? Well, so I'd, I'd probably, the first thing, this is, it would be sales, right? Uh, more engagement. Uh, you know, one thing I'm learning is uh, the more we have, the more we can give right? And we need to position ourselves better to have a greater influence in the community um, and re locally, regionally, nationally. Um, and, it, you know, it takes money to do that. It takes finances to do that. And we have to be a profitable, thriving business in order to have the impact we want to have in the community. Mm. Very, very true. And now before we get to our final question, we want to help spread the word about your business. How can people learn more about your company and, and get in contact with you? Yeah, very easily. It's NoRx Health. So it's K-N-O-W-R-X-Health.com or AbacacyRx.org, which is the foundation side. Um, Wonderful. Well, this has been such a great conversation. We've got our final question. We love to ask, what is most inspiring to you today? Uh, I think what's most inspiring uh, really is being able to impact uh, the health outcomes of other people and to bring more awareness to them to where they didn't may not have the awareness and just making general decisions. But really just knowing that we can help somebody else. I remember uh, walking out of the ICU and I, you know, I slept in those waiting rooms, on those chairs, on those couches for six weeks. And I saw a lot of families go through hardship. Eventually we were one of those families. And I remember walking out beside my mom saying, um, I may not be able to do nothing for my father, but I can help somebody else. Um, and that's what it's about, helping other people. Wow. That is, that's so powerful. And that like touches my heart. So thank you so much, David. This has been an incredible conversation. I really, really enjoyed having you on the show today. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this opportunity.